us on our Facebook pages. You can be watching from Facebook as well as JessFM.ca. You can also check us out on YouTube now. Yeah. With Jess TV. Ooh, catwalk. <laughs> Is everyone ready for you ask for it? <laughs> Got my little my little uh, things to come there. Oh, so I got that. Oh, All right. When we are live on Facebook, we will start our show. How's everyone doing on this Monday night? Who's ready for you asked for it? We had some technical difficulties the last week, so we are now back and up on our regular screen, and it looks good. And so we're going to share it. There we are. We are up. All right. Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. Welcome to You Asked For It with Levi Cox and Austin Walsh. And our special star, uh, guest star tonight, <laughs> Jesse Hair Shiny. Ah, Jesse Hair Shiny. Yeah, that's a plot twist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are brought to you on Jess FM by Catwalk Salon and Spa. So we are now sponsored by Catwalk Salon and Spa. Like we got our own sponsored show. I love it. So you asked for it. Brought to you by Catwalk. So. If you would like to um, have your business or festival or company uh, advertised on Jess FM, you can contact us at Jess FM on the Facebook page, but you can also get a hold of us at 403-9432. 403 <laughs> Oh, there's also there's two so numbers. That is our advertising number. You can also uh, instant message us on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash jessfm as well as www.jessfm.ca. So if you would like to sponsor or have your own radio show, contact Jess FM. If you have something interested, interesting you can bring to this station, then we would love to hear from you. So. Things have been going so great at Jess FM that Catwalk had to jump on and be a sponsor. So tonight we are doing a beauty episode and we brought one of our amazing stylists and makeup artists, Jesse, along with us to, to talk. So Hi, Jesse. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> we have some really great topics for you all tonight, so I hope you're tuning in. Stick with us for some great topics. Um, should we uh, get started with Jesse? Why don't you tell your, our audience a little bit about you? Um, my name's Jesse. I work at Catwalk Salon and Spa. I've been a stylist there for five years officially. Five years today. <laughs> today is her <laughs> anniversary. Yeah, yeah. Jesse started at Catwalk five years ago today. I just got that uh, email earlier, so congratulations. Yeah. And Happy anniversary, anniversary, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, tell us more about you. Um, I have a dog named Ziggy that I love and a <laughs> wonderful partner Shannon. Hey Shannon. Hi uh, Shannon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey Shannon. And yeah that's all I can think of right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, you were a, a large volunteer for the Derby Girls for a long time. Yes I've played roller derby in Lethbridge for seven years taking a break this year to work on other things. Uh, that, that derby scares me. Yeah, it's a it's, it's a violent. Lot. Yeah, yeah, you gotta take a break to you know get an old, <laughs> let the bones like Mend. not have a panic attack for one year and then back at it. So yeah. Well, you didn't take too big a break because you joined the Lethbridge Pride Fest board this year. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Just switching it up, so uh, just getting involved in the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you do something with Flip Fest as well? Uh, no, but I support them. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if you were involved because I know that Shannon's band plays and you're always going to the Flip Fest events, which yes. are awesome. Yes. So. Yeah. Flip Fest is wonderful. Hey, yeah. um, I, I'm jumping ahead, but isn't something going on tomorrow night at four Flip Fest? Yes. Tomorrow night, uh, Ray Spoon, it will be at the Owl. Really, really excited about that. They are a incredible artist from Saskatchewan, but if you haven't listened to their music, check them out. 
and they will be playing with Ground Sloth Orchestra and Respectful Child. Nice. That's a mouthful. Check them out. Yeah. So that's tomorrow night at Owl, so check that out for Flip Fest. Um, all right, so we are going to give you some fall fashion and beauty and trends and salon talk. That's how we're going to start off our show. And then we got some a fun game to play, and we have uh, all sorts of great topics like, uh, yeah, well, we'll get to them. So uh, fall fashion, we've been seeing some of the fashion shows and what's coming up, and people come in asking what's new for fall. And me personally, I, I judge what's new by what my clients are asking for. And, yeah, so... Yeah. That's how I know what's coming up. I like pay a lot of attention to like uh, Snapchat celebrities and seeing what they're wearing on their face and in their hair and stuff too. So that's kind of where I get a lot of ideas from. And as much as we all love hate the Kardashians, they sure are like some American fashion trendsetters. So I pay attention to what they're wearing and doing too. Those Let, wigs though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's get a ten thousand dollar wig. That's yeah. what's okay. in fashion. Let's not give those Kardashians too much credit because guess what? Stylists are putting the looks on them. That is true. true. So but they are wearing it and selling it. Yeah, so yeah. if you are a great designer or have a great idea, then you put it on a Kardashian and all of a sudden it looks like Kim decided to do two braids in her hair that she could never braid herself in her wig. <laughs> you know, and then it's like, and was like, I want those braids. So yeah, I think people like to use them as muses mm-hmm. more, more than they're choosing it themselves. I mean, I they're know that living mannequins. There's that, um, that young one, Kendall, Kylie, the one who thinks that she's. She's the only Kylie in the world. Kylie, um, who is a billionaire makeup artist, but I've never seen her put makeup on anybody. I've seen her swatch her arm, so, yes, you know. Yes, true. Yeah. And to piggyback on what Austin said, the big thing I tell my clients, because that's always been the question, like, yeah. what's new in hair trends? What's yeah. new in makeup trends? And it's also changed because of social media, so you're seeing a lot more um, artists, like, say, like Guy Tang for hair, yeah. who take it upon themselves to create new trends and Mm -hmm. so now the beauty industry and the like the product developers have to actually follow trend with other people which is interesting like you said well yeah you could become um a an internet celebrity and create a trend yeah jeffree star all the youtubers and like beauty gurus things like that they're like really changing trends and making them more instant too so like things are happening instantly whether they're we have to catch they think they're new or not and it's mostly you know like everything recycles and in the industry over and over again you just see little tiny twists on old things and call it something new well we used to have like just like magazines and what the the tv told us was cool so people would come in and say i want jennifer aniston's haircut i want courtney cox's bangs so it was like a very limited view of what was popular but now People are looking at so many medias, and they're looking at YouTube, music, reality TV, anime, everything, and bringing those influences into us. And mm-hmm. it's really important as hairdressers, we have to just look at a picture and makeup artists and, and be able to recreate that look. So we're like YouTubing it. How do they do that? Yeah, we get like a 10-second shot from your phone and then have to just like what's unicorn hair (laughs) i I guess i'll look up oil slick hair i guess i'll find out Mm -hmm. so we've seen a lot of these trends coming so uh so trends we've definitely seen is uh more wave in the hair more um air dried hair or like with wave or it looks like an air dried wave but you've taken a lot of time to do an an undone style with curls so a lot of like undone natural texture natural looking texture it's kind of what you're saying hey yeah and we even seen some well, many teen boys coming into catwalk and getting perms. Yeah. So that's kind of interesting. That's a very 80s look. I like yeah. to call them merms. Merms. <laughs> <laughs> um, another, perm. another trend we have been seeing is this, like, air-dried gel look. And it's something we did at Lethbridge Fashion Week where you actually put gel in wet hair and let it dry. I mean, how easy Give is that? a couple little scrunches and comb around the ears. Like a slicked back look yeah mm-hmm. like yeah you see again yeah. uh, kardashians wearing that wet jud look and yeah I just, i've seen a just few celebrities popped out of the shower and put in some dippity do yeah. you're good to go got the 90s <laughs> clip day. of the girl coming out of the water with the pushback yeah but Sports like Illustrated. with hairspray and gel forever yeah. that. um i saw this look uh coming out of uh, new york fashion week they're calling it the all-american girl and it was literally hair blow dried back so like no part just so like, long hair blow dried back. Kind of like Jackie O if you put a pin in her balloon. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I like that. What did you see with makeup trends, Austin? So I was like on a couple of beauty blogs just before this doing some research, but um, a lot of the fall fashion week in New York 
Um, most of the looks are like very smoky, lots of like pink still, and pink was kind of like our spring this year, so it's funny to see it's still translating in, but a lot of orange, and everyone has sparkly eyes. Okay, All well, it's glitter, and I'm totally into it. I love yeah. glitter. Well, am I wrong when you say pink and orange? Isn't that still rose gold? Yeah. Um, yeah <laughs> mix them together. <laughs> so we're Dusty still... salmon, uh, whatever you want We're seeing pink? Because whenever people say this rose gold, it keeps coming up again and again. Jewelry, mm -hmm. cell phones, everything for years now, and it's like, yeah. really, it's copper with pink. Right. Or brass. Copper or brass. and brass. Yeah. But if you call it rose gold, then it's not yeah. like, I see rust in my hair. You say, oh, rose gold, then they love it. Jesse is, wearing, Jesse is wearing our rose gold shampoo by Watercolor, sold at Catwalk. Yeah, so she is that. wearing the... We never get it because we're sold out oh, indefinitely. We, we, we keep getting it in, so keep trying. We do have rose gold shampoo. Yeah. But it still is a trend. But it's a weird color to say. So oranges, pinks, and then you, yeah, we saw a lot, a lot of, of gold glitter. lips coming back, which is like every fall season we go into more like plums or like burnt reds, things like that. So more like brown oranges, darker lips, or a lot of people are doing very nude lips now too. Um, so a lot of uh, the fashion shows this year were doing nude. But nude lips, what were they doing on the eye? That was the interesting thing, I thought. Yeah, so, and actually we're seeing a lot of, like, graphic pink liners and, like, blue liners, so, like, really bright, bold liners if it's a nude eye or, like, smoky rose golds and warm tones. I was going to say, eyes. did you guys see the new photos that Lady Gaga posted on her Instagram lately? Like, uh, from the Vogue photo shoot? Was it Vogue? I don't know. It was all okay. black and white. Really racy. Okay. But if you haven't looked at them, go look at them, because they are... Uh. They are hot. Ah. They're super hot. But she was rocking like the, like the very light like '90s lip liner. And mm -hmm. as soon as I oh, saw right. that, I was like, "That shit's coming back." Yeah, yeah. '90s <laughs> is comes. like really I, on an upswing again, though. Like we're seeing a lot yeah. of chokers. We're seeing high waisted pants come back. Full yeah. fours. Body a lot of crop suits, top, which suck. Body suits. Body suits. Yeah. All day long. Try peeing in that when you have like two seconds to eat and pee in between clients. Oh yeah, um, that's great. I want to say that wet that wet jawed look is also from that yeah, era. Very and 90s. If I start seeing twisted dreads, I'm gonna have a heart attack. Oh, well, I want to say also I gotta just give a shout out to Janet Jackson because she did that dark liner with the lipstick and mm -hmm. or like lighter lipstick and sign. I like was a big fan. But back then I didn't do drag or was like terrified of makeup. But maybe one day Chrissy's gonna have to wear like a heavy lined lip with a light lip in the middle. Because yeah. you saw that on Gaga? She did oh, that? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, uh, Janet was doing that in like the Janet album, and yeah. I was like all over it. It is something. Um, so, but we also saw a lot of sparkles on the eyes. Lots mm. of glitter on eyes. Yeah, and almost like kind of like a nod to the mod era, too. Like a lot of um, like liner in the crease. I've seen like a couple of shows were doing that, too. I noticed a lot of color from like your your lash line all the way to your eyebrow. Like I call that garage doors. Garage doors, yeah. like a lot of color. Like like you blink <laughs> and it's like the whole thing, right from like top to bottom is one color. Forget about it. <laughs> Mimi Bobek, but skinny. So we, we we're seeing this natural textures and we're seeing these natural looks yeah. uh, coming back. But on the flip side, we are seeing um, a lot of color trends. And they were on the runway. They were calling it the Disney villain, and it was like basically black hair with like purple and green and red. Mm -hmm. So it was like called the Disney villain look. Um, and we we see a lot of uh, still a lot of colors in the shop and. You were talking about the new colors we just got into Catwalk that yeah. we haven't even used yet. Yeah, like speaking of like 90s, like <laughs> very grungy colors are kind of coming in. That's a good way to put it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we're seeing like almost these, and again, it's, it's out of boredom that things start circulating, right, and becoming, but we're not seeing a lot of vibrance. We're seeing a lot of like lived in colors, lived in haircuts. But by lived in, I mean like... You were bright teal like two weeks ago yeah. and now you washed it And now it you're twice. smoky. Yeah. So we're seeing like smoky mauves, um, the like antique roses. Um, even we we got like brand new color swatches from Revlon this week and like khaki green. Khaki green for yeah. your hair. Things to like make your hair look like you just did like a what is that thing called where people run through the mud? Yeah. No, like a mud yeah, crawl. tough mudder. Uh, well, tough mudder. Yeah. I, with your brand new, <laughs> I was like... kind of joking with Jesse, and I said it's like a unicorn, like rolled in the dirt. Exactly. We were, we were <laughs> Jesse was calling them off colors. So, yeah. so so we're seeing these off colors. So they're basically um, not just pastels, but kind of grungy colors. But uh, yeah, like so matte say textures had, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So say you've had like a, a violet based brown in your hair, or a red a red brown, like a cherry brown. Well, you're kind of over that, so now you want to see like just like a blush brown. 
yeah. with like I'd say like a rose gold mm -hmm. end, or you want to see like a a mauvey brown if you can picture that with like a little bit of a soft um, dirty lilac kind okay. of end, smoky Love lilac it. kind of end. Yeah. Well, well that's dirty. that still yeah. means bleach, so it sounds like we're still bleaching your hair for the trends as well. Uh, it's yes. like you bleached it six months ago and you're still riding it through though. Yeah. And, and you can't do that. Colors are actually four levels of lift, so. You're going to be able to put those into a base color, which means no bleach. Oh, I didn't know that. Fun awesome. Um So for men, we're also seeing, like I said before, we've seen the perms for men, but we're seeing a lot of these undercuts. I always call it like the like the Nick Carter hair. It was like part in the middle and it flops over. Like I'm seeing these undercuts. Like especially on the teen boys. They're they're trying that look. Everything we're saying is like super 90s. Mm -hmm. So you notice that? Like yeah. everything we're saying right now is totally 90s throwback. Um, as far as styling your hair, one of the things we saw in trend were ponytails braided and also low ponytails and knotted ponytails. Yeah. So those were all trends we saw. And what was that? The Coachella... Talk about those floral oh, crowns. Yeah. So, like, Coachella is kind of becoming more Woodstock now. <laughs> right. So instead of, like, flower crowns, we're seeing more just, like, flower placements and, like, mm -hmm. fun little updos Because don't like get that. us wrong. Like, we're, like, not exactly, like, 20 years old, either of us. And I feel like yeah. I've been, like, I'm kind of a little out of the loop when it comes to the really younger crowd. And yeah. I feel like they're going more 70s. We're, like, sticking to our 90s because, yeah. uh, you know, and they're almost going more 70s wearing, like, even their clothes are yeah. changing. But, like you said, with the draping flowers in yeah. here rather than, like, the big yeah. crown. It, it, yeah, so I saw these this new look that they're doing. It's, like, instead of, like, the flower crown on top of your head, it's, like, it rained on it, and now they're, like, dripping down your head. You know, and it was it looked quite neat. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see those selling at Claire's soon. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, even in clothes now, like I'm seeing a lot of floral prints. Oh my gosh, full lots of floral right prints now, which yeah. is usually more of like a spring summer kind of thing. But we're going into fall, and like I'm seeing so many floral prints right now. Yeah, yeah, and it's that muted again, mm -hmm. like like with the hair color. It's like those muted or prints like that aren't your like your grandma's couch. It's like navy with yeah. some pink flowers mm -hmm. on it, or like some dusty. Now I know a lot of you reach out to us and ask us. Um, I know on this show we don't just always talk fashion and beauty, and we're going to get into some more broad topics coming up, but I know uh, we get a lot of personal messages about, like, what new look should I get? What are the trends? And these are things asked all the time in the salon, mm -hmm. but really when we look around the salon, and there's um, 13 stylists on the, 12 stylists on the floor, you look around, all the stylists have different hair, and then uh, you see all the clients have different hair, so we're not seeing one specific trend. There's not one bang. There's not one texture. There's not one length. But we do see more women with short hair. We still see hair tattooing. We still see, um, I noticed that a lot of our clients who have silver hair have been going into colors. And so it's nice to see some of the silver people adding some color to their hair and changing up that gray look. Mm -hmm. Although I don't think the silver trend has gone. It's a little bit more obtainable too because like mm -hmm. with these like bright colors, you don't have to lift to a level like 20. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To get to that like white silver, you can leave it at like a level 8, 9 so it's more yellowy orange undertone and then like really correct with a deep blue because you're going teal anyway you're going to yeah yeah, yeah. i i want to like just quickly talk about um silver blondes and these trends and people see these pictures it's not for the faint of heart and we usually tell people do you like your length or your color yeah. because it's really hard to have these colors and that tone so um do you want long hair or healthy hair yeah so hair's not supposed to be gray or white until you earn it so that's when you can have that hair, but we're probably going to, in our game we're playing today, maybe they hit that topic. So um, I think that kind of, it looks like that's a lot of what our, our trends are seeing. Oh, another trend we're seeing is people are um, having the lash extensions for the last few years because it's been like about five years of lash extensions. Mm -hmm. And they're noticing their eyelashes feel a little weak, so they're taking a break. And the big alternative to that is the lash perms are back. So if you get a perms and tint, so now there's the lash tint and perm in one step. So we perm your lashes standing straight up and dye them black. But we're calling it a lash lift, so it's not scary. Yeah, lash <laughs> lift. <laughs> yeah. Uh, perm smells, smells smelly. It does smell smelly. Um, I'm going to... I'm gonna <laughs> smelly smell. I'm going to use this to r go into our next uh, segment. So here is one more little quip on what is new at Catwalk, and that is threading. So we uh, we have Emma join our team, and uh, Emma is from England, and big in England is threading. Threading comes from India and Indian culture, and it is a way to remove hair. So now we're doing this threading, and people have been asking for the last 16 years at Catwalk if we're going to do threading, and now we have threading. So Yay. thank you, Emma, Yay. for learning threading back in the UK and bringing it to Catwalk. 
So threading is a technique using a string in her mouth and twisting it and going up back and forth across your skin and pulling the hair out. I actually get so less irritated from that. Me too. Mm -hmm. But it's Well, you stay red for like two seconds. It's gone. It's yeah. not replacing waxing because I still need other areas it's done like that I'm not having very her thread. Precisely. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. But without breaking the hair, because um, I feel, find tweezing, you can break the hair. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Where the threading like actually pulls it out. Yeah. So, so speaking of India, da 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 da, -da. <laughs> uh, congratulations to India for uh, having criminalizing uh, gay sex. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so way to go September 6th a huge uh, a huge win for human rights mm -hmm. and for the people of, of India thank I'm so happy for you looking at the pictures and all the people celebrating and smiling it was like that's so amazing because you could face up to 10 years in India for being gay and this is like terrifying they don't even have a, a proper stat for um, the amount of gay people living in India so I am so happy you get to live your life and be and it's okay to be gay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, or we're gonna anything else. So now, now legally, but I'm sure the city, the the country will take a while to shake that out um, in their culture. Yeah. And like, you know, there's gonna be some violence. There's gonna be some pushing it back, because people are gonna be like, I'm gay, and you can't throw me in jail now. So I'm gonna wear a rainbow flag dress every day to work, and I'm a boy. <laughs> you know, like we're gonna see like some, yeah. You know, pushing forward. Yes. But. That's a huge move for India, so I'm so happy for you. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Can you imagine, like, being able, like, um, I identify as a, a gay male, mostly gay, <laughs> um, and uh, Austin as well, and mm -hmm. you identify as something. <laughs> well, we, we all fall in that umbrella. Yes. So we all fall under the umbrella of queer. Yes. So we are, we can't even imagine being in a country where you, you couldn't be gay. Yeah. And so it just, it's such a huge thing. I mean, the fact that it was something that wasn't even talked about and now that people can talk about it, I'm sure a lot of families are gonna be dealing with some coming outs over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, and definitely. Like that's in workplaces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there'll be some like tentativeness coming out because I don't know if this is the first time it's been decriminalized. But I'm not 100%. It's just something I like briefly read, so. Well, looking back in, in uh, Indian culture and even in the Kama Sutra, there was a, a whole chapter on gay sex. And when the British colonies came in in the 1860s, they, uh, they made it illegal. So they actually changed their culture. Mm -hmm. And so big change for that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. see what happens. We're excited though. We're excited. Yeah. Singapore, I hope you're next. We're watching you. Yeah, none Russia. I like uh, yeah, Russia. Get on level, dude. No. Yeah, like everyone. Let's just show Russia that uh, gay concentration camps and making gay illegal is not the way to be. You're on the wrong side. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations, India. Yes. Woo! Now we have oh, a new destination: Indian pride. India. India pride. Yeah. Mumbai. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. So um, we have a lot of stuff going on. Oh, should we play our game now? Yeah, but I have to Okay, we're going to Jesse's going to grab our game pieces cuz we're going to play a game we've never played before. <laughs> All right. See roll about that. So Austin, tell people how they can join us on Jess FM and uh, watch and join in on the show. So, I'll just say it again. Yeah. You can go on www.jessfm.ca or facebookcom jessfm and you can catch us on Jess TV there as well. Uh, do we have any uh, comments coming in from our our we feed. got some uh, Jesse's friends here saying, "Go Jesse!" Oh, oh go yeah. Jesse! <laughs> go Jesse! I think Jesse will be on our show again because there's so many things we all do together. We have so many things we are part of, sponsor, promote, and we're just very passionate people. So I'm sure we're gonna have Jesse back on the show again. So we are gonna play a game. We need um, a cup or something, a hat. Can we use your hat? Oh. <laughs> okay, Austin has donated his hat. Uh, I know you can, if you're only listening, he's do taking off the hat. This is going to make everybody cringe. So, okay, Jesse, <laughs> what is the name of this game? Before I say the name, just a disclaimer, this is not to throw shade at anybody. This is just three hairdressers having fun at our uh, most feared questions or things that come into Situations. the that make our faces go that, like this. Like this. And. So and this yeah. game is called, are you ready for the cringe? Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> and if you are offended by this, 
You're probably one of these people, and you got to look at yourself, honey. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> me, Austin and I have not read these questions. We are playing a new game called Unbelievable on Jess FM. So these are moments when you come into the salon and you tell us that there's a certain look or show us a picture, and you tell us you want this look, and we give you a face. Or we're shocked, or call someone over. Um, or we make you sign sweating. a waiver. Make it's you because <laughs> you're crazy. No, because we make sign. Hey, and by the way, our us as hairdressers, we sit in the chair to ask these same things and show the same pictures. We're yeah. just as so. Fast. So here is a game called Unbelievable. So what we're gonna do is pull out a question and then have to answer it as if you were coming into the salon asking for this. Is that how it works? Uh, yeah, or like tell a story, whatever comes to mind. Okay, just, so Austin, you ready to go okay. first? But we'll promise we won't name names. Okay, oh. Austin's going first. Here we go. <laughs> oh, no. He's in the hat. Okay. Unbelievable. What is it? I want white blonde, but no cut, because I'm growing out my hair. <laughs> and I <laughs> would probably say, well, your hair looks like it's cutting itself. <laughs> so I don't need to do that today, but I'm not giving you a discount. Okay, so the question <laughs> is, I want white blonde, but I don't want a haircut today? Yeah. So what else? What, why, why would this make you cringe and pull that face? Oh, just because, like, <laughs> it's got to be cut. When people are, like... <laughs> <laughs> holding on to like their husband hairs, I like to call them. Yes. Like my husband likes my hair long, so they haven't cut it in seven years, and you can read a newspaper through the ends. <laughs> it's not healthy <laughs> hair anymore. It's just it's got to go. What if you cut it? Yeah. I promise you, it will look thicker. It will look healthier, and you're kind of doing like damage control because if you don't cut those off and there's a split in your ends it will keep splitting all the way up your hair shaft so every one hair turns into two or three hairs in the <laughs> ends like a broom <laughs> and it's like velcro yeah too so yeah. those hairs are like sticking to each other as soon as you cut that off you will be able to comb your hair and it will grow longer faster because it's not breaking as fast as it's growing. I will admit I'm a repeat offender for this because I have gone a year without cutting my hair and I own a hair salon because I was trying to grow it out. But I realized I wasn't getting anywhere and sure. so I just needed to go get a shape. So uh, I also want to say with that question when someone's like white blonde but no cut, mm -hmm. I'll say okay if that's really what because clients are right you know when you want to make them happy I will not cut their hair or I'll air cut it as we call it where we yeah. do like a millimeter and then they're like it's so short so short and then um I'll just let their hair cut itself till their next visit and they realize they want to lob yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right Levi your turn oh my gosh do you have anything what about what what about that question no, I want to see the rest of oh my gosh okay <laughs> I am now I've got my hand in the hat of danger what question what what makes m okay here we go oh okay well <laughs> Okay, hello. So my question from the client will be, I want a silver ombre, but I black, I black box dyed it. Um, I want no yellow, and I want it today. Okay, well, <laughs> this is a hard one because, you know, people come in and they show us these wigs, and I can show you the link on eBay where to get one. They have black roots and silver ends because Kylie Jenner and Kim Kardashian's blonde hair is a wig. Those are, girls are wearing wigs. I want you to know that. It's very rare to have silver hair and have it healthy. And um, I have a lot of um, darker haired clients and they want this look. And I'll actually Google real life girl with silver hair and I show them not the Instagram model, but what it looks like on the daily. The Photoshop version yeah. in the streets. Yeah, and they're like, I don't want that. And I'm like, well. I am not a wizard. So I'm when a so I'm going to walk you through what it would take to get you a silver ombre and you had black box dye and no yellow. You want it today? I'll promise you. I'll try to get it um, it that way, but I will probably make you sign a waiver, and you probably have old highlights underneath that black dye. So wherever it was bleached before will be extra damaged. Um, you may end up with like a jellyfish of hair where it's just like some tendrils at the ends. But you know what? We would take time to do this. I would try to get you silver. I would try to talk you out of it. Uh, but if not, uh, we'd go for it. But it would take up to three appointments. You'd sign the waiver. It may You may have to take home uh, at-home products like silver toning conditioner from Chi or the silver shampoo from Watercolor. And you may have to use Ultra Bond. And um, we'll work on it. But it takes constant toning. Our waiver says things like this. Um, may not be silver. May cost more. And may... Uh, require more treatments. And it may not take your two and a half hours that you have booked with us too. These right. things take like six, seven hours. And if you're mm -hmm. like watching Guy Tang's videos too, he says 
in every one of his videos. This took 10 hours. This yeah. person has been here all day today with me for more than a regular work day. Yeah. 10 hours to get somebody from one color to another. And it doesn't even look that dramatic. The really yeah. big crazy ones, they take a lot of time. Yeah. The best way to get a silver ombre at Black Roots is if you already had platinum hair and we put Black Roots into it. Mm -hmm. There we go. True. Cringe. I made that face. You did. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait. All right. Here's Jesse's question. I got the magic hat. All right. This is one of my favorites. Uh oh. I have thick hair and I'd like to cut it below my shoulders, but no layers. Oh. This has been. Yeah. This has been so consistent this last I, I year. I see you yeah. do it the other day. And I'm not sure oh. why. So I just. I, so. I'm glad that I pulled this one. Thick hair. Would like it cut below the shoulders, yeah. no layers. Yes. Yeah, so I I'm have getting... a song that I like to sing when this <laughs> happens. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> so, you go first. Uh, so I, I've had this experience a lot lately where, like, I feel like when I was a kid, there was this awkward length that you never wanted to be. And that was mm -hmm. maybe the last time that I had, like, long hair or, like, could grow it out long. So maybe that's why. But right. anyways, there was this awkward length that you didn't want your hair to be. And lately, I've had a lot of people come in and want their hair cut right here. But they don't want to bob. They don't want it long in the front. Yeah. They just want it cut right here, and they don't want any layers. Oh my gosh. So, I just my my thing with this one is that I try to um, get people like always bring for me anyways. Always bring pictures. Always bring inspiration mm -hmm. because sometimes you're thinking something in your mind, and it's hard for us to really visualize that because we're very technical people. Yeah. So when we think that, we think of literally like this box getting cut, this square onto your head in the most awkward <laughs> spot and doing its own thing. So what's your song? I always say, oh, Christmas tree, oh, yeah. Christmas tree. <laughs> because those ends get so thick when like it's going down that just, I don't know how to explain it. Like if you have like a big handful of spaghetti and you chop a straight line in that, it's so thick at the same like thickness at yes. the ends as it is in your hand. Yeah. So no yeah. matter what, and I always preface that because they're all showing me the picture of like Khloe Kardashian's wig too. All of them. <laughs> yes. And like we've said their name 800 times in this oh episode, my gosh. but it's so true. And I preface that that's either like an undercut, like when everybody wanted like Victoria Beckham's diagonal forward bob yeah. like there yeah. is like literally no hair in that nape and everything yeah. comes over top of it yeah. Yeah. to get rid of bulk or it's so textured and just that very top horseshoe of hair is not texturized so it goes over top of mm -hmm. it and makes it look smooth but yeah. just because what you see isn't what you get yes yeah. it's and it's trickery. not wrong it's not but wrong just a word to the wise like when, when try we and find a reference picture yes, because when we see you we've got about like five to ten minutes to figure it out before we have to start doing something mm -hmm. and we want to make you happy but the thing yeah. is like trust that, your stylist yes yeah. and that like you will get a much better result if you have an idea because our minds we like pictures like, we, we actually kinda, we, we love like pictures. we like when you bring us pictures yes. yeah. yeah we don't want to be that guy that you're like I asked for this and they gave me this but we mm -hmm. also want you to leave with something that's like actually you can get yeah. brushed through and like clearly communicate it too. like tell us what you like about the picture not just yeah. I want this picture. Like, what do you like about it? What's like the feel in it that you like, or what don't you like about it? Like, talk more about it. Don't just show somebody a picture. But I love, I do love pictures. I just like to have yeah. a conversation with it too. Yeah. Um, and I just want to say I'm still shocked that um, por a porn star has influenced all these hairstyles so much. Because <laughs> never in the day did Gemma Jameson uh, influence this many hair conversations. True. But you know. Uh, Kim makes one hell of a sex tape, and we're like still talking about her hair years later. So, way to go, Kim, because uh, Tracy Lord's never created this kind of trend. Uh, so, you know, Debbie does Dallas. They're not asking for that perm. So, good job on her on that porn tape. So, that was oh a great job of unbelievable. Thank you. <laughs> I just can't believe how many times we say those girls' names. That's terrible. Um, and actually, not that many clients even bring in their pictures. The young girls aren't that interested in them. The young yeah, ones, like no. the teens? No, they're no. over it. They're over mm -hmm. it. They're on to like other, I, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. So we are going to save these other questions for the next time we play Unbelievable here on You Asked For It. Yeah. Well, I'm putting my hat back on. Okay, <laughs> our next topic goes out to all the animal lovers out there. So, hello animal lovers. Are you tuning in? Are you listening? Because we love our pets. Yes. We love our pets. As um, 
queer identifying people, we're not having children. Not that you couldn't have them being queer identifying, but we don't have kids. But we have beautiful animals. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Jesse, uh, so this next topic uh, speaks to you and to us very personally. Yeah. So we're talking about animals in the workplace. So this is a trend that we've seen. And Austin, you said some big companies have taken this on. Uh, Jesse was actually oh. talking about that. Yeah, I, I watched a documentary. Google is actually probably the biggest one. And they encourage people to bring their dogs to work and their cats. And they, they just have to be social. Yeah. But productivity has gone way up by Google. <laughs> So uh, yeah. it works. So Google says their productivity went up with pets in the workplace. Yes, and a lot of places have followed. Oh. With that. Yeah. So maybe on you asked for it coming up, you'll hear my cat Cleo. So maybe I'll bring her to work She'll and be our, like, we'll be more proactive. Scratching. <laughs> <laughs> in the background. And purring smoking. two minutes later. She like an owl, then she's cuddling. So <laughs> at, attitude. Um, at Catwalk Salon Spa, who has sponsored our wonderful show today, uh, we have two cats who come to work uh, Tuesday through Saturday. And if you are allergic or scared, we will put them in the basement. We do clean our shop and chairs every day to make sure there's no allergens. Hopefully flying through, we have an air filtration system, which maybe you guys don't know, mm -hmm. at Catwalk to clean the air. But um, we do have two cats, and most people are just so excited to see our cats, give them a treat. <laughs> they always wish that they'd spend more time with them, but our cats kind of like to get a pet and go away. Mm -hmm. So, uh, But Jesse has turned the trend of Catwalk to cats to dog walk on Mondays. Dog run. Dog run. <laughs> Where Catwalk is dog run on Monday. So, so tell us a little bit about dog run on Mondays at Catwalk. <laughs> well, dog run, basically. Actually, dog run was a threat that I made to Levi when yeah. I started working there. <laughs> that if I ever won the lottery, I was going to open up a rival salon uh, next door called Dog Run by so, Catwalk. Oh my uh, gosh. By Catwalk. By Catwalk. You would help me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Could be a but, barber shop. So, yeah, <laughs> we, we joke because we're Catwalk, you could be Dog Run. Yeah, but um, dog people. But uh, Jesse's been bringing her dog Ziggy in on Mondays, and uh, Ziggy is a big, lovable, still in the aesthetic of Catwalk, wearing the, the black, and uh, Ziggy, you can be, come visit him at Catwalk on Mondays. Mm -hmm. yes. We always joke and call my boyfriend. Yes. He's like my buddy. I get right down. I've always loved dogs so much. Yeah. yeah. Austin is, oh, I'm going to save this for another episode. We'll talk about that later. Okay. So. Yeah, but I will say, I will say that, like, it's it's been really nice, and a lot of the clients have really appreciated that. I haven't I've been watching and seeing how people yeah. take him, because mm -hmm. he's a giant Labradoodle. He's pretty big. Yeah. A Labradoodle. Sweet. Yeah, sweet He's giant, guy. and he's fun to say. Yeah, but <laughs> he's fun to say. Labradoodle <laughs> and Ziggy are both but, fun. <laughs> but, yeah, no, people have really liked it, and I think in an environment like that, sometimes when we're working there, we forget how vulnerable it is to walk into such a huge space full of people. Mm -hmm. And um, having those pets there is very comforting for a lot of people. It's something that you can go to and just connect with without like it being like a human because sometimes you don't want to connect with a human. Well, it's just easier to connect with an animal who's not going to like stab you in the back. Because we don't just pet each other when we meet each other. Yeah. You can. Well, you could, but, but weird. With animals, so, it's just easier. Yeah, like, it's there's no judgment. They sniff your butt and it's cool. Yeah. It's do, you, do you know what's yeah, funny? I pieces. never <laughs> once looked at it that way, but I 100% agree. Yeah. You walk into this big, fancy shop, but we're so comfortable there. But I notice people walk in and they gravitate to the animal. Oh, where's Cleo? Weird. Where's Where's yeah. Isis? Where's Ziggy? Um, I had a client uh, commenting on Saturday that she didn't see uh, Cleo or Isis, and she's like, "I missed the cats today." Oh, so I posted always. some videos. So people do look for those animals, and honestly, it's like they check in, they see the cat, they sit down, they start petting. So mm -hmm. it really disarms. Ooh, we have a question. Yeah, Valerie says, "I'll bring the pigs." Oh, I am <laughs> into that. Hey, you bring your. I'll little believe piggies. it when I see it, Valerie bring Brown. Those little piggies. <laughs> Where's the pigs? I love piggies. Okay, so okay, if we if we got dog run and we got cow walk, what do we call it? Pig. Pig roll. Pig roll? <laughs> what, what do pigs do in the mud? They roll, but they, what's, isn't there a thing for it? I have one for birds, too. We could have a bird brained. Oh, my gosh. I'm actually terrified of birds. Yeah, I uh, don't know why, but I like, <laughs> have a more, like, a... Oh my so gosh, Val Valerie, that's hilarious. So you bring the pigs, okay? Yeah. We're gonna have a animal day, animal day at Catwalk. So, anyway, we wanted to talk a little bit about workplace uh, animals because I know Drunken Sailor has a cat. Yeah. Yeah. They do. Um, Union has a dog, I think. Union has a dog. Yeah. Union, another hair salon in the city. Um, um, Nikolai always had their dog there too. Nikolai did have a dog. They're not around, but they did have their dog there. About a great cat dish there. Yeah. Um, and Astro Insurance has uh, giant poodles there. Yeah. So, oh, and CopyCo has birds. That's why Austin doesn't use CopyCo. Right. <laughs> Friday's Liquor has a really cute giant pit bull. 
Friday's liquor has yeah. a pit bull. On the north side. Some I'm love to the north side. Positive. There's some tattoo shops with dogs running yeah. around. Hang on. Did you be. say positive? Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, <laughs> ask, just ask Google. Pets to work, driving uh, productivity says, up no. the. My mom says no. No. No to pigs, mom. No to pigs, oh. oh, I love. We're bringing no, no. We're bringing a. We're bringing a owl. Petting zoo. <laughs> She'll retire one day. Owl cafe. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll become an owl cafe. Bring your pet and receive ten dollars off at Catwalk Salon Spa. Just kidding. Love you, Joanne. <laughs> Uh, bring we'll your start back. a Japanese um, <laughs> like cat cafe. In exactly, Catwalk. exactly. Um, so we have a lot of things going on uh, this week and coming up. So we're going to talk about some of the awesome events going on in Lethbridge. Remember, we had Rib Fest that wouldn't end. It was like a Lord of the Rings trilogy uh, of like Rib how Fest. How many cows died for this <laughs> feed bag festival? It was amazing, though. <laughs> I actually loved Rib Fest. I wasn't really appreciative of some of the news articles they wrote afterwards. You see that? Uh, yeah, the guy from Ottawa, who the, I think he's the guy that runs it. So he was so horrified that um, there's homeless people in Lethbridge. Uh, you're I, from Ottawa. Do you not have any homeless Give him some he, ribs. Did you, did you read it? I did. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't he, that bad, but the way that Global kind of wrote it, I, I, I felt Global, like it was... Global's the worst these days. Global is like... A lot of negative Global's like the things. guy, or like the whoever in school that's just like, hey, Devil's and advocate. just like starts it. Oh, really? Yeah, Global's horrible oh, these days. Well, stirring. I must say... It's stirring it up. I love you, Global. Global. Come get an interview from me anytime. I'll I'll tell you. I'll spill the tea. I love you, Global. <laughs> but um, but but, the tea. but I did um, I did find the. It was a little disappointing for that kind of article because yeah. when mm -hmm. you're seen, here's the thing: is so funny about anything in hairdressing and life. You can get a hundred compliments. Maybe you can get ten compliments. You can get ten great meals. If you get one bad meal, you get one bad customer service. You get one bad compliment on your hairstyle, or and we all freak out. Mm -hmm. And we get to that place. It's like, you know, it's mm -hmm. it's okay that someone didn't like you. It's okay that one person didn't like their haircut or sent back their meal. It doesn't mean the place is terrible. I mean, I have a favorite restaurant, and then all of a sudden I was like, well, tonight's was okay. But you know, I go back. It was one lovely. So you and I were talking about. I'm just saying there was hundreds of satisfied customers at Ribfest. Yes. So I mean, a couple incidences. When you look at what is happening. I have a really bad joke. I'm trying not to. Oh make. my gosh! What is your joke? Well, they had all those zorbs out this year, and a big part of it was to zorbs? do with the need those zorbs, those oh, big blow up balls. Oh my gosh! Oh. Right. Were, and the. They were worried about needles in that part, but those things are expensive. Oh my um, gosh! I never thought about no, that. No, but it's, but I mean that was a big part of it. They had a lot of kid-friendly events and a lot of family-friendly events at Ribfest this year, and I did catch that in the article that they, we're they did. They the just they were saying that they needles? saw a lot more this year, but it's we are in a state of crisis. It's not a, like Lethbridge is going through a crisis and we're crisis management, but he was Not just Lethbridge, so let's be honest. It's a world it's, it's crisis. A, yeah, it's a, definitely it's North huge. America. It's Demi Lovato, Prince, and yeah. in my friends in um, Vancouver, the stories coming out of there are, mm -hmm. are really terrifying. Yeah. But I want to do a little Zorbs comment, because that's what those things are called? I think so. So Zorbs are a big plastic ball that you go inside and you run like a hamster wheel. I have to tell you, I'm jumping ahead, but it just brought back a memory. We went to the movie The Meg, and we were going to talk about this movie The Meg. And this guy is on the ocean running in a Zorb. <laughs> so he's like running on a Zorb through the ocean. He's like running over all of his. He's like, running over the people, people because like there's the a Thailand shark. Coast in there in the Thailand coast. And the Thailand coast. And this like The Meg <laughs> comes up and eats his Zorb. Hold on. How did he get into the Zorb on the ocean? What? You rent them on the ocean in Thailand. And uh, you can Zorb on the ocean. Yeah. So you go but in the it's water. It's like double hulled, so there's like a foot, like. Kind of cushion of air, so it's like a zorb inside. And then the megalodon eats the zorb. Ran that far that the yeah. megalodon could fit. Oh, okay. the, no, well, like let's not spoil anything okay. here. For okay, the well, people who have not watched the meg? Yet, well, we will talk about. If it you're later. on the ocean running in a zorb and a megalodon eat, ate, ate you and like it popped and killed you, it was really dramatic. <laughs> It'd be like Jonah and the whale. It'd just come out the other end. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, yeah. yeah Excellent. Is that what happened to Jonah and the whale? The system yeah, that apparently. <laughs> so, so anyway, other than the the Lord of the Rings trilogy that was Rib Fest, which was awesome and delicious, um, it was. Uh, we got lots of other things coming up in Lethbridge. Uh, we personally got the New West show. What is it called again? Do we know? Legends? Um, no. The something quartet. The oh, Golden Quartet? Nope. No, I know this. Oh. oh right here. New West Theatre is opening up their show tomorrow night in the new and renovated uh, 
uh, New West Yates Theater. It's not the New West Theater, it's the Yates Theater. It has finally done renovations, and we are invited VIP to go see the show tomorrow, and also the exclusive hairdressers for the New West crew, and we are coming to see the new show about... It's just like a throwback, like kind of thing. To the Lots legends, of, like legends. Elvis. You got Elvis, Roy and, Orbison. Like, yeah, like older songs. Million Dollar Quartet. That's Million it. Dollar oh, Quartet. Yes. We're gonna see you tomorrow night at the Million Dollar Quartet. We'll be backstage styling some hair, we getting got them some excellent good hair, some good like era hair. Yeah. Hair. But I'll be at Race Boone. Yeah, so she's going to be at Race Moon and <laughs> Owl will be at Million Dollar Quartet. This and we're excited to see Yates' new facility because yeah. it's all ran out and really? this is yeah. our opening now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yes. So they took off over a year and they were doing the shows over at uh, Chinook School on the west side. So our local theater, which is amazing, it hosts a lot of great artists and musicals and um, everything. And so it's like an icon to Lethbridge. It's got its first uplift in like a long time. So Probably since uh, the 60s, I bet. If I could toot it or boot it, I hope I can toot the new... The new the new Yates. I can't yeah. wait to see it. But don't toot in the new gate. Oh, no. I'll keep it fresh. I'll keep <laughs> it fresh. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do wherever don't I want. Don't judge my body. <laughs> okay, so coming up, we got the New West show, the Million Dollar Quartet. Go out and see that show. It's going to be amazing. I've seen uh, uh, as many of the actors and actresses in it, and it's going to be a great show. Mm -hmm. um, also, we have the Diamond Bridal show coming up next weekend. So not this weekend, the next weekend is Diamond Bridal Show. So if you're getting married or you're thinking to get married or just want to come and enter for door prizes, come to the bridal show at the uh, exhibition. At you can check out Catwalk's booth there too. And we are at the NMAX. Yes. So we are at the NMAX doing the Diamond Bridal Show. We are the exclusive hair salon for that, I think. Mm -hmm. So uh, next week, though, that's – sorry, I got ahead of myself. This week coming up, we have to make an apology here on You Asked For It. Last week, we said it was drag me back to school at Club DD. We were wrong. It's it was this weekend. This weekend was a panty raid, which was really fun. We went to after Alexis, one of our coworkers, got married. Mm -hmm. We went to the panty raid um, this Saturday – Next Saturday is like this coming Saturday. Yeah, this Saturday, it's like fifteenth of September, is called "Drag Me Back to School" by Sophie Wright, and we're gonna have a lot of great drag performances. So if you want to come see some amazing drag and talent in Lethbridge, come to Club Dee Dee this Saturday. Your very own Salem Salem has a killer number ready for you. So mm -hmm. now that I'm actually in it, because I backed out and I'm like, oh, just kidding. I'm <laughs> had a brain fart. He's popping. He's popping. He's popping. He's popping. I can't wait for well, your I'm show. I'm not doing that anymore. Oh, no, Aww, do it, do it. No one knows spoilers, what that is. No one knows spoiled. what that is. No one knows. I actually don't know what that okay, is. Okay, good. So. See? We're excited for the new show. So we got uh, Drag Me Back to School this Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the 20th, oh, and also next, this Saturday, uh, we also have Medicine Hat Pride. Yeah. So if you're in Alberta and you're looking for something um, fun, celebration, you want to give some support, head out to Medicine Hat Pride. If you're in Medicine Hat Pride, go check it out. They have a great lineup. They have a dance. They have a out in the park. Uh, it's one of our favorite events. We have to miss it this year in Rosori Medicine Hat, but you're going to have a great time. The weekend after that, nerds beware. It is the 29th. We are having... The Comics, Cards, and Collectibles Show. Comics, Cards, and Collectibles Show. You can meet toy friends and so much more. Um, I'm having a... I'm going to have like five tables at this thing. I am selling toys and nostalgia from your childhood. So come to Lethbridge Cards and Collectibles Toy Show uh, September 29th at the... Where is it at? The Royal Canadian Legion. Royal Canadian Legion. Which is a good venue. We were at that for the last one, too, and it was a pretty easy setup. It's a nice big building. It's downtown. It's central. It's easy to get to. They have a big parking lot. So across from the water tower, come to the toy show, and we are going to do an all-nerd episode of You Asked For It before the show. Woo and then uh, October 1st, we have our Halloween episode, which I'm really excited about. So we're, having, we're really getting our thing going on at this show. Um, so that's kind of the stuff we have coming up in Lethbridge over the next few days. Um, so we're going to go on to another segment, which is movie reviews. Mm -hmm. Movie of the week. Movie of the week. So I don't remember what movie I told you I was going to watch last week, but I it watched... It was like an 80s horror -y thing, though. Like, oh, I don't yeah. know. We watched that... Um... One with the mannequins. What it was wasn't it that one. I reviewed that one last time. You did? Yeah. Oh. Didn't you open up a new movie and it was B grade? It was like Tourist. The Tourist. Tourist Trap. Tourist Trap. Okay. That was I, the I did, mannequins not one. That one. Okay. Well, I watched it last week. We were, <laughs> we were gonna start watching Snow Creature and I couldn't understand it. 
Oh, oh, I was watching Snow Creature and Austin like wouldn't sit through it. <laughs> like, too far down the alphabet. Just the oh. audio is like really not yeah. legible. I could not hear anything <laughs> that was happening there. Okay, so my review this week then is UHF. So if you remember this show, UHF is one of my favorite shows and it stars Weird Al Yankovic who is known for doing great music parodies like instead of bad, he'd do fat. And instead of like a virgin, he'd do like a surgeon. Well, this is a show called UHF, and it really inspired me because on UHF, he gets his own like low budget TV show, like local show. He turns it into, and turns like it into a, a network brand. So it's like, Jess FM is going to be the new UHF. We want awesome shows <laughs> where we're going to like entertain you and we're going to become so big. We're going to be network. And that's what UHF, it really empowered me. Mm -hmm. But it was so funny watching. Uh, if you guys remember UHF, it's like, you know, he gets these shows on there like Conan, the librarian. And he's like, don't you know the Dewey Decimal System? And he, like, cuts this guy in half with a sword. And it, he, it had so many great people. Like, I don't know the name, Fran Drescher from The Nanny. Yeah. It had Kramer. It had, like, all these actors who went on to really big things on Iconic the show. Iconic roles. Because yeah. we don't even know their actors' names. We just know their main characters that so they played. So if or... you want a good laugh and you want some throwback, and you've probably already seen this as a kid, but mm -hmm. UHF is definitely my pick of the week. So... I give it a toot, not a boot. <laughs> Do you toot it? I toot it. <laughs> I like it a lot. Actually. You seen that UHF? Fun. No. Oh, I'll have to lend it to you, Shannon. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's yeah. a good laugh. We would love some weird owl in our lives. <laughs> and last week, I was talking about some like nostalgia movies for me. So I actually did go and purchase a troll in Central Park, and it was like mostly what i remember it was very like floofy and i was just like i gotta get drunk to get through this so <laughs> sometimes uh your nostalgia things aren't as good going back to it um it wasn't as amazing but i did also uh watch the sword in the stone oh, okay and i love that movie yeah so that was actually a good did, little nostalgia throwback for me i liked it a lot so um troll in central park it was not disney but kind of looked like disney it was like a girl like princess and... it was kind of like I don't know, that, like, spin-off from Disney that did, like... Thumbelina. And, like, Secret of Nim, oh, right, and, like... Yeah. The, like that's Swan kind Princess. Of the deal. Anastasia. That's, Princess, like, that's yeah. the one, who isn't it? Felt like, yeah. Isn't Princess Troll and the in Goblin? Central Park? Is it isn't that the same movie? I don't think it movies. is the same... Um, but that's right, I don't right, think it's right, the same right. animation yeah. studio either. But it's that kind of feel. Anyway, it's, it's okay music. I, it's not, like, quite a toot or a boot. It's, like, a... I don't know. <laughs> and then like, Sword in the Stone is it. definitely a toot for me. A toot for Sword in the Stone. So I want to just quickly say about that is um, it's funny when you watch back a childhood show and it's not as good <laughs> as you remember. Yeah. You know, because we just, we, we loved UHF and it felt like mm -hmm. as good as it did. But I tried to watch Thundercats, which I, <laughs> I loved and I, I, I had many years of childhood memories trying to be Church Hara running around my yard. And um, I tried to watch that show and it was terrible. But the animation was good. Yeah. So, uh, Jesse, tell us a movie that you recently watched. Well, I was just going to say with Austin's throwback, mm -hmm. my mother, I went to visit my mom a week ago, and she made me go through boxes in her basement that I didn't even know were there. All the so, VHSs? Yes. But I also, I just want to say this is a tangent, but I also had a vast McDonald's TY <sighs> Beanie Babies collection oh, that I found. Yes. So I have, like, a ton of those. Did but you then, bring them home? Yes. Someone's looking them for them. Oh, perfect. Great, because I have them, and that's my retirement fund, apparently. So. Well, if they're not <laughs> worth anything, but if they are, uh, we know someone who's doing those Make-A-Wish boxes for oh, Africa, and they're that's actually cute. looking for those. Perfect. So, Excellent. We'll talk about that. Um, we'll make sure they're not worth money first. <laughs> so you got a bunch of... But I found this VHS that was The Adventures of Natty Gun. Did you guys ever... I never saw it's that. It's about... And I, I used to love that movie, but I don't remember. I need to rewatch it, but I feel like I'm going to have an Austin experience and be like, I should have left this wherever I right. had yeah. it. But wherever looking your heart back, was singing from it. Yeah, it's like a... It's a tom... It says a tomboyish girl who uh -huh. goes on an adventure with her wolf dog on a train or something. It's oh, I Disney. do remember that. Yes. I do remember yeah, that. I'm so excited to actually watch it, but Aww. I feel like it might not have as much Natty oh, gun. You just gotta get like yeah. really stoned. And yeah. Speaking of stoned, <laughs> our, um, <laughs> October um, October sixteenth, pot will be legal in Canada, and Yay. we were talking about this. Was that for a segue? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so October sixteenth, pull out natty gun and go get some yourself some marijuana. It looks like um. Have a cry. Maybe, yeah, it looks yeah. like um the Esquires is gonna get some pot. 
Is it? Yeah, it looks yeah, like it's going to be a cafe. I think they're going to be a cafe because the 420 Clinic's right beside it, but I think they are moving into the Esquire's building. Now, we don't want to start a rumor, but oh, it, it looks like I Esquire's. I heard a rumor that says we're getting a pot cafe. <laughs> so, um, Esquire's, it looks like they're going to open up into a dispensary and sell marijuana. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. October 16th. I think, actually, this can be the savior to the downtown that we need. The downtown needs more drugs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what I know for Lethbridge. No, but we need more small business, and I think it's a great business yeah. opportunity. We yes. definitely need some more small business. So yeah. I think that yeah. the the pot uh, dispensaries are going to be great. We did hear that um, edible pot will not be legal right away. Which is so no, sad because I just want some stuff. space cake. But I will tell you. I'll make you space cake. <laughs> I will make you, you some space cake. You buy the legal pot, she'll make space cake. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. So I want to tell you I got yeah. an insider report that says that edibles are on their way shortly, okay? They're just finding a way to tax us on them. Yeah. And, yeah. and, uh, and, and probably, probably test like the amounts of in, in it. Yeah. Government regulate. Yeah. So we are getting really clo close to the end of our show. Um, but I wanted to talk about something else. It was. Um, Nicole? Maybe some movies going back no, to that? No, not we movies. We also watched uh, this one. Oh, we did watch those movies. <laughs> oh, speaking of uh, downtown needing more um, more drugs, um, <laughs> I want to tell you Catwalk Salon Spa, we have been undergoing renovations, and tomorrow night another exciting key to the renovation goes in, so hopefully as October 1st, we will be serving alcohol. Woohoo! Oh. So we can serve you a Chardonnay, a Merlot, so some Pinot Grigio if you're nasty. Maybe if Catwalk is still a sponsor <laughs> for uh, you asked for it, maybe they can serve us a cider on the next episode. Ooh, so we can stop drinking this sparkling bow. water. <laughs> yeah, all this water here. <laughs> so uh, it looks like we are three minutes out. So we got just a couple quick movies to uh, touch on. We went to go see the movie Teen Titans Go yesterday with, we one, of, that with Spencer, one of our best friends. Our and, best toy friend. And uh, he'll be at the to uh, Comic Toys and Collectibles mm -hmm. card show with us. And he's also a stylist at Catwalk. So we went and saw Teen Titans Go, the movie. I had no idea what it would be. But it was fantastic. I really liked it a lot. The and I music. Was like, I'd never watched any of the TV series, so yeah. I, I'm not like endeared to the animation style yeah. or the characters or anything yet. But I really liked it. Yeah. Can teen I ask a question? Yeah. Is there a Teen Titans and then a Teen Titans Go, and one is more adult cartoon and one is more I kids think cartoon? Teen Titans Go is more like Teletoon style animation, oh. but Teen Titans is like a little higher budget animation. Gotcha. So Teen Titans Go is very um, Powerpuff Girls, but with really right. good yes. music. Yes, it's yeah. really good. Yes. And and My Little Pony, they have the same kind of design. Mm -hmm. The new well, they My do Little now. Pony, but it's like the music in it is like what was that song? We're gonna sing an uplift song, <laughs> uplifting song. I don't know. It was really <laughs> it good. It was stuck in my head all day yesterday. <laughs> yeah. though, they wrote a song like, called Uplifting Song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I bought it, yeah. But, but it's horrible. like yeah, it was but like no, terrible. like in the Lego movie, <laughs> like an. 80s up awesome. inspirational song. song. Yeah, yeah. And Kenny G like did a cover I oh, think. They were or, ironic. Like, it was good. Well, yeah. Michael Bolton. Yeah. Michael yeah. Bolton. Yeah. It was funny. Yeah. And so. Like, and they wrote, yeah, like Hercules. It's that voice. We need an uplift, an 80s song. I don't know how to yeah. sing it. So <laughs> uplifting song. So <laughs> I want to also give a special <laughs> birthday, <laughs> a birthday shout out. This is not. Oh what, yes. So first I'll say to Diani. Uh, happy birthday. I'll say to Linda McFalls, happy birthday. Mm -hmm. But I also want to say to the marvelous Shira, you look great at 33 years old. And so she, she's she, getting... Well, Shira, the cartoon, uh, turned 33 yesterday. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, so... But she does look good. She looks good. Shira, yeah. you still look filmation great. Now, <laughs> I want to tell you, we watched your trailer. For your new Netflix series. Reboot. Reboot. It's so good. And the animation is totally like... Funimation, like, reminiscent, but it's kind of Sailor Mooney, too, and I'm totally into it. Yeah, so the we were... so good. We were talking last week about all these shows getting reboots, like Murphy Brown, Roseanne... Um, Will and Grace. Will and Grace. Mm -hmm. And now She-Ra's got a reboot, too. So we are yes. on to something with this recycling the old, because we want to feel nostalgic. So, mm -hmm. right. She-Ra, your trailer rock today. Jam and the Holograms is next. Come on, bring back Jam. Do it. We need some, like, tacky, violent... Yeah. Storylines, <laughs> with music. Year old girls. No with music. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, the last thing we went and saw was the Meg. It was Jurassic Park meets Jaws meets Deep Blue Sea. 
and with a much more plausible storyline, and I like. That. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Austin's like, I believe this could happen. Well, that's I'm like, you believe like, that megalodons could come and like yes, eat other the sharks? the way they prefaced it, because like I am only into movies like that when there's like some element of plausibility, even though it's like completely fictional and like mostly fluffy bullshit. It could actually be a thing. So I liked it because of how the story was written. There you go. I really enjoyed that movie a lot. Well, we are actually 8.01. We are past our time for You Asked For It with Levi Cox. Austin, I want to thank our special uh, guest, Jessie. Um, we are going to have her back because she's a lot of fun. So we want to thank Catwalk Salon Spa for sponsoring our show. And we want you to know that Jess FM is looking for more sponsorship. So please join us and we will get you on Jess TV, our website, our Facebook, and our Instagram. And we will help promote your business for very reasonable prices. So we are looking for sponsorship here at Jess FM. And we hope you all have a great week. Have a good week, everyone. Happy Monday. See you next Monday. Bye. Bye. Bye.